Good evening. This is our Wednesday, our Tuesday Bible study. Uh, sorry, I kind of dragging share, share some back problems, but uh, I still wanted to cover things. Today we're going to do some supplementary material. You can go to the website, and there will be a study sheet for today, dated with today's date. Hearing God and not hearing man is the title. And we want to look at a couple of verses that you'll find there on Genesis 12.1. <clears throat> Reminding us that God called Abraham, and he used Abraham as one of his prophets. We look in Genesis chapter 27, and God not only spoke through Abraham, but through Abraham and the lips of all of his prophets. And we see that prophets we can list as Ezekiel, Hosea, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Amos, uh, the list can go on. But they all were there to speak. And uh, it's very critical to understand this. In fact, when we see a distinction that Christ makes when he talks, it is written in the prophets. And we're reminded in John 6, 45, and they shall all be taught by God. And what we see is there's a key critical em emphasis that Jesus makes here. It's not that Jesus is calling his ultimate prophets to talk about himself, but rather sent to his prophets so that they could use their mouths and lips. When God spoke through his prophets so that he could use their mouths and lips, uh, they were being used as a type of pipe or channel through which God spoke. In the Old Testament, God called prophets, including Abraham, so that he could speak through their lips. And God does the same thing today, uh, but in a little different way. God calls pastors so that he can use their lips to speak his word. If you want to take a look at Ephesians 4.11, that'll highlight uh, some ideas there. But what do we find in many churches today? We find pastors who preach from the pulpit about God or of God. And God rejects this kind of preaching but God desires his own word to be heard through his prophets. Now, let's consider an example of that. Think about a governor. Let's think about the governor of your area. And he sends a representative to come and speak to you. And that representative comes and to speak to you, supposedly to bring you a message from the governor. And what does he do? He speaks only about the governor. You know, the governor is a nice guy. The governor does this. The governor does that. But he doesn't say what the governor had to say. In order to please God, pastors need to spend many hours reading, meditating upon, and wrestling with God's word in the biblical text. And this is a big part of preparing for a sermon. And I find myself, when I'm not ready to put that sermon together, it means I haven't studied enough, and oftentimes find myself going back. But pastors are not doing this to share something about God, but to share God's actual words. And Jesus gives us an example of this. He's what we might call the prototype of this. And what does Jesus do? Well, we can go and look in Luke 4, 16 through 20. And what do we find there? Um, we see Jesus there. Um, enters the synagogue. The book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He opened the book and he read from the text. He closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant there and he sat down. Then Christ spoke his father's word. At that moment, people heard God speaking to them, not simply in words or ideas about God, but they heard from God. And so how is God's word fulfilled today? What do we deal with today? Well, when pastors preach the prophetic word of God, Christ promises uh, his fulfillment. In fact, I gave you the Bible verse, John 6, 45. Everyone who has heard and learned from their pastor comes to me. And that's Jesus speaking. Those who refuse to God, hear God's word, God's voice, do not come to him. You see, only a divine solution prevents apostasy and falling away. Um, 
Today we see statistics of massive amounts of people falling away from Christ Church, especially young people. And I don't think that's so much the case anymore. I think we see many men dream up clever gimmicks to curb and even to reverse that falling away uh, from the church to kind of attract them through other means. God, however, offers only one solution. When his pastors, his prophets speak and preach in such a way that people actually hear God speaking to them, only then is this falling away stopped and reversed. And I can tell you, I've seen a lot of pastors over the years try to coerce people into coming to church by not using God's word, by using other means and, and other ways of getting them there or uh, other odd ways of, of having church. But um, God wants to help you and your family. And what does he want to do? He wants to do a few things here. We're going to look over these in the next time we get together. Uh, there's four things. Um, and A, God uses his living word to speak through his prophets. And what did he do when he did that? He rescued the Old Testament people from apostasy and eternal damnation. And B, we look at the book of Revelation and we see it documents that God spoke his living word through New Testament pastors and thereby also rescued them just as he rescued Abraham uh, from the enslavement of Satan. And then three, today God desires to rescue you and your loved ones from the attacks of Satan. And Satan's still there. And he still uses his demonic powers. Look at Ephesians 6.12. I have that documented for you. These evil powers have this goal, to rip you away from your Heavenly Father by destroying your faith, to take you back to unbelief. Today, you and your loved ones face many attacks of Satan and demonic powers. Satan fingerprints are all over our curtain culture and even in the church. In every worship service, adults and children who sit in the pews are hurt, damaged, and, and confused by the attacks of Satan. They're very, very real. Parents and children frequently feel burdened with guilt, inadequacy, without any direction or hope. Many people in churches today can be characterized as the same as those people who gather to hear Christ. Distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. And sheep without a shepherd just do what? They wander. Well, your Heavenly Father has a desire, and He wants you to draw tightly to Him. Uh, money, medication, not men, uh, nor any political powers can change the confusion of our culture and the apostasy that we in our church, see in our church. Only the living voice of your Heavenly Father can pull you away uh, from that apostasy. He draws you to Himself to do what? to forgive you, to protect you, to strengthen you, to give you eternal hope, the most important hope. Again, Christ repeats in John 6, 65, For this reason I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted from the Father. Today, through their parents, people need to hear their Heavenly Father's voice just as he spoke it in the Old Testament people. Come now and reason together, says the Lord, Though your sins are scarlet, they'll be white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they'll be like wool. And that's from Isaiah 118, a very familiar passage. We also have the elderly and the dying. They need to hear their Heavenly Father Christ say to them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And for I go and prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also, John 14, one of my favorite passages. And all who come to Christ's house of worship today, today need to hear uh, the Heavenly Father who is faithful and from a pastor who will use God's word. No temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to men. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation, God will provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So what we're saying here is a very important understanding of the hearing of God's word. And we need to cling to that hearing. We're gonna be looking at those four different areas that I shared with you just a moment ago. 
as we move on. Let's bow our heads now and pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, send modern day prophets among us and to us. Send pastors when they speak, bring cleansing, healing, and strength from your living word and give you us your hope, a hope that is eternal. We pray this in Christ's name and we pray it with confidence. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry I'm a bit short tonight, but I'm, uh, i got some back pain getting taken care of tomorrow. You all take care. God's blessings to you.